So it's possible that you've gotten all this correctly. But if you forget anything at all, don't forget that. So once your layer chickens have arrived on your farm, there are three main things that you need to worry about when it comes to the production that you expect from them. If you are thinking of maximizing their production, that is, you want their production to be as high as possible, the number of hex that you can get from them to be as high as possible. Maybe you've had people talk about 96% production, 92, 80 something. However high you want to get, there are three things that will help you get there. I know usually these birds come as point of cage and then in some cases you're able to get maybe 15, 16 weeks. Once they land on your farm inside the cages and they are getting set to lay, there are just three things you need to worry about. Number one is the feed, the quality and the quantity of the feed that you give to them. And number two is the air, the ventilation. How spacious is the place? How ventilated is the place? Is it choky? Do you have ammonia build up in the pan? Is the height of the structure big enough to allow good cross ventilation? Do you have just two rows of the cages or you have three rows? In this case, we have just two. So those are the things you need to consider in terms of the hair. That's the quality of the hair now. And number three is the water, the water. The water, they say, is that ingredient that is often forgotten. In chicken farming, if you care to know, a lot of people talk about the feed, they try to change from one feed to another. They want to buy the most expensive feed. And they ask farmers from time to time, once they hear people doing better than them, and they ask them, what feed are you using? That's just the question they ask. But I tell you, the water, nobody talks about it. However, if you ask me, I would say it's one of the most important things that you should consider. So today I'm going to be emphasizing on the quality of water and how much of importance it has as to how many eggs you are able to get from this flock per day. All right, so this flock that you're seeing here, they were brought in here at exactly 12 weeks. That was December 8th and there are just 3,000 birds in here. They started laying, I can't remember the date, they started laying at exactly 17 weeks and 3 days and they are really doing so well. Currently, they are doing 17 plus crates. Yeah, I'll show you the number of eggs that we have already. I think we have close to 80 or thereabout crates already. So they are doing well. And I tell you, this story about these birds is not just unique to this farm. I've heard from several farmers who would report the case. They would say, okay, they started so well. The birds were doing well, they were happy and all that. But things started going bad. Why? Because there are some things that you guys don't look at. There are some things you don't consider on your farm. Once, especially when things are going fine, you just expect that it continues to go fine without you doing your part of the job. Oh, I can see some of them, their combs are well pronounced. Let me see if I can zoom in before we get talking about our water as an important ingredient. Okay, so some of them have really pronounced combs already. Okay, probably when I get inside, I'll show you better. So, back to water quality and the role it plays in the quantity and quality of hex. Do you know that each egg that you see has over 70% water where does that water come from it comes from the bird's body that means they have to drink a lot of water to be able to put out lots and lots of eggs the egg is also highly nutritious having all the nutrients that you can think of they're only void of vitamin c the egg itself is a powerhouse hence it is important that these birds too have access to good quality water if you have poor quality water one of the things that you notice is that even your birds will not drink well and we'll talk about quality of water we'll talk about the ph of the water we'll talk about how pure the water is in terms of impurity level and then the temperature of the water is it always warm is it too cold that it shocks the birds you know all those things are critical but then there's one other important thing i want to say about that water you see a lot of us we have embraced raising layers in cages and it's beautiful 
I tell you, it's awesome. People would even tell you that one of the advantages of the cage system is that the water is covered. You know, it's not exposed to impurities and all that. Yeah, that's right. But I also tell you that bacteria are everywhere. Bacteria, fungi, and all those things. But emphasis on bacteria. Bacteria are everywhere. And they find their way even into the pipe, the drinking system, the water line. They find their way in there. And you see what happens inside of these water pipes will run not just water but even water that has been mixed or constituted with multivitamins yeah of course sometimes you use antibiotics but a lot of times we use anti-stress in form of multivitamins and that makes for a very suitable habitation for bacteria i tell you if you notice you see that the water is usually warm and that's why some of you probably do this practice of making sure that you release the water that is inside the pipe and you allow fresh water to flow in so that you release the warm one, the hot one, and allow cooler water to flow in. That's very good. But that's just an indication that this pipe holds warm water during the afternoon. And let me ask you, what have you learned about bacteria? They thrive in warm, humid environments. So if there's water, they thrive. If the place is warm, they grow, I mean, they replicate, they multiply seriously. So that makes this water pipe a very suitable place for bacteria to grow. What's more is that you even furnish it with lots of vitamins that help them to thrive. And before you know it, you now find biofilm building up. So the bacteria, they're not just flowing inside there, they are also clogging to the walls of the pipe inside and there's a thick biofilm being formed so they are glued to that wall and they are released inside the drinking system as the birds drink they are constantly taking in bacteria yeah i know that occasionally you also give them antibiotics to make sure that you read their system of the bacteria in them but what good does that do it means that you have to spend your money you buy the antibiotics of course during the time that you apply the antibiotics to them it kind of purges the one in their system but then inside that water line because they are so much glued to it it's just the ones on the surface that it gets to um, erode it gets to kill destroy the ones on the surface but deep down closer to the wall of the pipe there are still more so after the few days of using antibiotics they begin to replicate seriously again they begin to multiply seriously again and before you know it they start to go back into the bird system and it's just like a reoccurrence of problems and problems and problems so you, sometimes you think that those antibiotics you're using they are not working they did they did work if the root cause remains there that is the bacteria that are constantly loaded in the water line if they remain there, it means that the bears are still subjected to the same thing that is making them go heal, sick, and you know, sometimes you know, you, what you notice is that they are not eating as they hot to eat, they are not drinking as they hot to drink, and production starts to crash. It means that the whole thing, the whole problem is going to happen again and again and again. But then, am I just here to tell you about the doom that faces poultry farming, layer farming, especially cage rearing? Am I just here to spread the doom? No, I'm here to preach about the solution. So one of the things that you can do is to make sure that you clean the water line from time to time. Yeah, I know that a lot of people have adopted the method of using chemicals. Maybe they use chlorine from time to time. But there's a problem about chlorine. For chlorine to work effectively, there are some parameters that you have to meet. You know, the pH of the water and all those critical things that you need to worry about. You are not a scientist. So the peroxide is another alternative that people use. It's another chemical that people use. Ah, that works too. But then what it does is it helps to break down those mucus lining, those, the biofilm in the, and in the pipe and makes, it breaks it down such that once you flush, most of it gets out. But just take it like that, most of it, not all of it. And again, that also, you don't want the breast to be drinking that. So some of you would say, you do it in the night, you allow it to stay for a couple of hours. And not everybody follows 
the directions of the, all these things to the letter. I tell you, most of the workers that you live on the farm to do it, they just do those things anyhow. And once the manufacturer says, do it, spare, let it stay for 12 hours, let it stay for two hours, make sure that this is the inclusion level, this is the dosing level. If you don't do it right, then you are not getting the right result. Why don't you just use the water pipe cleaner, the poultry water line cleaner? It's simple and it's so easy to use. I'm pretty sure that with just a few adjustments to the existing water line that you have, I'm sure your water line will be ready to allow such a thorough cleaning by using the poultry water line cleaner. I made a video detailing how to use that water line cleaner even if you don't have it before, if your water line system didn't put that into consideration when they were installing, you can just make just a few adjustments and it's ready to go. I'll drop a link to the video, to that video in the description below and I think I'll place it somewhere here too so you can see the link. I'll place it somewhere here but make sure you watch this to the end. So it is important that from time to time you use this water line cleaner. You just run it from one end to another and you just bring out all those crazy biofilm. You know, it's amazing that our beds are doing so great. You know, they are laying good eggs. You know, this is still small egg, but I mean, it's sellable. This is not the peewee kind of, uh, the peewee size of eggs. So this is still sellable as small eggs, and some of them are even medium and a few large already. <laughs> I call those ones mamas. So it's so good that they are performing well, but then, if you are having this kind of experience now, you know, the bears are doing really good. And I estimate that by 22nd week, by the time they are 22 weeks on the farm, will break even such that at that point, their hair is able to pay for their feed. But if you are getting this kind of result, this is no time to relax. I tell you, it is time to now be on your toes and make sure that the birds are enjoying their stay. In these cells that you have kept them, you know, of course, this is cells, this is cells. You see four of them here, four of them here, four of them, four of them, just across the cage. You have kept them in this confinement. That's bad enough. Why don't you just give them quality water? Quality water will help them to lay, I mean, so many eggs for you. So it's possible that you've gotten all this correctly, but if you forget anything at all about water, don't forget that it is that medium through which all the nutrients are transported within the bird's body. So you want to make sure that you are giving them quality water. Water quality is key, even though most farmers forget about that. 